Hey what's up folks and welcome back to another layer by layer. In today's tutorial we're going to take a look at making circular snap fits for PCBs and other shapes that are in the same layer shape. So let's take a look at our overhead here. I got a demo. I'm using the Adafruit Circuit Player and Express for this project and you can see it there. So we have a 3D printed mount and a couple of months ago we made a tutorial on this case. So let me show you a demo of it working. So there are these two tabs here on the side and they have these little nubs on the edges there. They are curved and circular so they match the contour of the board. And the way this works is if we fit this over here, you want to put uh, the PCB underneath that first tab like that. And then if you look at the other one, you see that it just barely is able to clear that. So if we give it a firm press, you get a nice click and now it's in place. You notice that the PCB now cannot be rotated and that is because there are these little pegs that go through two of the mounting holes, one here and the other one right there, and they're kind of diagonal like that. And the reason why they're like that is so that they keep the board registered in place so it can't really flex much. Now to get it out, you notice that there's a hole on the bottom of this mount. You can use the hole, of course, to pass wires through, maybe even put a battery in there, but what you can do is you can use your finger to push up against that PCB and use your other finger to kind of press out of the tab and that way you can free your PCB. No screws needed here. It's all just snap fits. No support material either because the nebs are printed at a 45 degree angle. Very similar to our snap fit cases that are more of a square, but uh, this is a circle. So we're gonna take a look in Fusion how to uh, make this. Now I have another version You'll notice here on the tabs, they have sort of these uh, reliefs right there, and that kind of gives the, uh, the tabs a bit more room to flex like that. You don't necessarily need those. In this case, <laughs> we have uh, an outer shell here that's fully enclosed, but you notice the tabs are still in there. They just have a tiny bit of clearance between that. It gives it enough room for it to flex. It, has, it also has a, a bigger uh, fully closed uh, hole here for the USB port. So I'll line those up. Just like we did with the other mount, we'll get that PCB through that first tab at an angle. And then you can see it right there. Click that in there and you can see it just barely gets that nub in there. So again, we have those two pegs here that act as registration and uh, it doesn't rotate. There's a tiny bit of flex in there. You can probably hear that. Very tiny amount, but that's just for loose tolerances on my 3D printer. You'll see that the USB port lines up nicely as well. And now how do we get it out of here? Now that you don't have any stuff on the edges to grab onto, well, I still have a hole at the bottom, so I can use that to press the press it out. And then what I'll do is I'll just kind of grab my thumb in there and just carefully get it out. Super easy to do so. So those are the two different ways that you can kind of uh, create this uh, mounting snap fit for a circular board. This can be useful for not just a circuit player on Express, but also things like NeoPixel rings. Those are PCBs that are circular and they have LEDs on them, just like the Circuit Playground Express. So we're gonna jump into Fusion 360 and take a look at how to design this parametrically driven so that this can work on other projects. All right, so here we are in Fusion. I've gone ahead and saved a blank document out as Circular Snap Fit, that's what I named it. The first thing I'm gonna do is create a new component and we'll, we'll call this like the case assembly. I'm not sure how many pieces there's gonna be, so I'm just gonna make this sort of a master um, component. I'll go ahead and make another one and I'm gonna start off with the bottom area, which is gonna be the mount that holds our fictitional PCB. All right, so now that I got those two components created, I'll go ahead and bring up my user parameter window. I'll go ahead and create some of these guys. Uh, the most common things that we use here is something called shell, which is like the shell of our case. I like to make it one and a half millimeters. Next thing is the gap. It's a shorthand word for saying tolerances or clearance of the between distances. I'm gonna make this point three. And the next thing I'll do is I'll create another one called main diameter. This is gonna be like the main diameter of our, the internal diameter of our case. We should probably call it an internal, if I can spell it, <laughs> internal diameter. Let's go ahead and name that, uh, give that a value of 52. Hit okay. All right, so I got my three shell gap and inner diameter. So now that I have that, make sure our bottom component is active and I'll go ahead and start sketching on the bottom four plane here. Let me figure out where I am in space and time. I'm somewhere over here. All right, click on that guy. Cool, now I wanna make this a sort of a centered based um, 
design. So I have my circle tool. I'm going to go ahead and draw in the center there. Instead of putting a number, I'll say internal diameter. And now I got that. Very cool. The next thing I want to do is create a shell for this, an, out, uh, an offset outline of this. So with that selected, the circle, I'll hit the O key for the offset hotkey. And instead of uh, putting an offset position value here, I could just say shell because I want that to be the shell. Excellent. So now I have my internal diameter here and my shell. Cool. I'll hit finish sketch. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and extrude these out um, using my extrude key. I'm actually going to make this go down instead of up. See how that goes up? That's a positive value. Down is a negative value. Instead of putting a negative whatever number, I'm going to put negative shell. And that gives me that 1.5, one and a half millimeter size that I'm looking for. I'll hit OK. Now, my sketch went away, so let me go bring it back because I still want to edit it. And I want to grab this guy. Now I want to extrude it out. So this is going to give us the kind of height that we want for our case to be. It's going to be arbitrary number, maybe 12. Seems good. And that's good right there. So the next thing I want to do is I'll hide the sketch. Now I want to create those tabs on the uh, sort of the bottom inside of this of this little uh, case. So what I'll do is with this selected, I'll go ahead and create another sketch. You can see it there. And what I'll do is I'll grab my circle tool. And what I want to do is I want to grab uh, this guy. And instead of adding another value, I can actually do a little bit of math. So I can say uh, internal diameter. I want to subtract that by the shell. But I want the shell to be double because right now we're working with radiuses or diameters. So with the parentheses, I'll say shell times 2. And that will give me that. So I'll hit OK. So now if we look and zoom in, if I select and hold down Shift, these two circles, you'll see at the bottom here it says there's a distance of one and a half millimeters. So there's that shell value is basically the offset between these two edges. And that's kind of what I want. I want everything to be kind of consistent with that uh, shell. So I got that going. The next thing I want to do is, is I want to create another offset of this circle, but this time we're going to go on the inside. So that's going to be a negative value. You see the value changing. Let's go ahead and select that value, get rid of it, and say, you betcha, shell again. <laughs> so we got shells all over the place, which is nice. OK, so now that I have this sort of inner uh, lip created here, I need to create something that's going to break this so that I can have a selection of it. The best way to do it, I think, was with a rectangular tool. So I'm going to kind of arbitrarily draw over here and then kind of make my way over there. So with that, you can see I have these two selections here. And those are going to be our tabs. Before we extrude those out, let's kind of define this shape. I want this to be um, a midpoint constraint across this edge and this edge. I think the best way to do that is with our line tool. And what I'll do is I'll roll over this top edge here until I get that triangle. That triangle lets me know that's the midpoint of that line. So I'll click there, and then uh, click the next point over to the center of our circle. So I'll click on that. With this line still um, creating a new line, I'll go over to this edge and now roll over until I get that midpoint. I'll click to append it, and now we have that. What I'll do next is I will hold down the Shift key and select those two new lines. And then all we need to do now is click on the horizontal vertical constraint, and that'll tell them to be horizontal and vertical, respectively. So now with that, I'll hit the Escape key to get my regular uh, selection going. And now when I drag and click this around, you'll see that it has um, it, it keeps it central to that square, no matter how far I make it. So now whenever I apply a dimension to either of these edges, let's say we want something like 12. And this one over here would be like 60. That way it goes away. All the, uh, that way it kind of encompasses the whole circle. And now you'll see that we have these selections here. We don't really want that. So instead, what we can do is select those two lines that we created. With them selected like that, I can use this key right over here. It says construction. Or I can hit the letter X on my key, and that will make those construction lines. They're still there. They're now. Uh, what do you call them, like dot dashes. And now it won't uh, break that profile, so I can select that whole thing. But what we're doing is we're selecting these guys on the outside here. So we got those two. And now what we can do is we can start extruding those out and then making them whatever height we want, um, depending on 
uh, where our PCB is going to be. We haven't added it yet because um, this is kind of like a fictional one, but if we did have it, we would want it to go a little bit beyond the height of the PCB. So I'm going to make this like eight right now, but we can change that later. So I'll hit OK. So now that we have our tabs created, what we want to do is we want to create those nubs. Now the way to create the nubs is we need to make it in a way that uh, it can be swept along this path here, uh, which is the inner uh, the inner sort of diameter of our tabs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at it straight on like this. I'm going to create another sketch, but make sure that I draw it on this surface here, like that. Okay, now what we need to do is kind of create the profile of our nub. It's going to be a triangle, three-sided triangle. So what I'll do is I'll kind of create one over here arbitrarily, and I'll start sketching it out like this. And I'm not sure exactly if this is correct or not, like if it's perfectly proportional, doesn't matter because I'm going to apply some stuff to it. So let's grab this edge and I want this to be a very specific uh, height. So I'm gonna make that two, all right? And then the next thing you'll notice is that this guy, I think it might have already applied, yeah. So this right here and this right here uh, has or got an automatic constraint, I believe. So what I'll do is I'll say, I want this edge to be a certain degree from that edge. So I'll click there and you see how it's like 52 point lot of lot of. I need to make this 45 degrees, hit enter, and now you can see that it uh, it's no longer proportionate. So all I gotta do is grab these two edges, these two lines, and then say I want them to be perpendicular with each other and that will uh, make it proportional. So now this two, these two are now also 45 degrees and so is this one, this is 45 degrees, you can see it there. So now that this, uh, this is kind of fully defined, I can drag this around and I need to define where it needs to be in space. So I'll grab the dimension tool, the letter D, and I'll click on this edge. And then I'll go down here to the bottom and click on that edge. And that will give me a distance between that edge and the center there. We need this to be, well, our inner diameter minus parentheses, inside the parentheses, it's gonna be shell times two, hit enter. And what we did here is we forgot to do something. I need to actually say diameter divided by two minus shell times two. And that will push it right where we want it to. If we zoom in close, you can see it there. So now all we gotta do is define the top. How, how far up do you want this to be? So I'm gonna click here. Uh, I'm gonna add a dimension to that dot and the center dot. And this way we're gonna go this way like that. So it's up and down. And then I'll, I'll add eight because that is the extrusion height that we added when we first created this tab. And that's kind of where we want it to be. So I'll hit stop sketch now. And what I can do now is actually start to sweep this profile along this edge, okay? So let's go ahead and grab our sketch toolbox, type in sweep, click on it, and I'll select this. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at our panel first. Type is set to single path, that's what we want. Profile wants me to select it, so I'll select a triangle. The path. Let's select that and we're going to click on this top edge here. Now you can see that it is uh, swept from edge to edge. You'll see that there's two distance input boxes. This is saying 1.0. This is also saying 1.0. If we bring in these arrows, you can start seeing the value change. You can't actually apply a real value distance millimeters. It's more of like an integer. So it's like a 1 or 0 0.01 or something like that. So we can put 0.8 over here and 0.8 over there if we wanted to. Uh, make it not so uh, to the edge. But if you do, you can just leave it at one and one. Okay, there's also some other things that we can play with, but we don't really need them in this particular case. I'll hit okay, now we have those guys here. And if you want, you can kind of clean up these edges here, round them out rather, not clean them up, but you can round them out if you want, um, if, if you don't want to poke your hands, um, your fingers when you're in there. And that looks pretty good. Now, you're wondering, well, what about the other side? Well, the other side, let's go ahead and go back into that first extrusion of our tab and deselect this guy over there. That way it's just one tab, hit okay. And it, since it's mirror, or since it's a symmetrical based design, we can just completely mirror this whole tab. Best way to do so is with the mirror command. So I'll say sketch toolbox and then type in mirror, enter. I'll change the pattern type from faces to features and that way we can just go ahead and select this extrusion, this sweep, and that fillet. Now where it says mirror plane, go ahead and select, and we want to mirror it right on this plane here. 
get a little green preview of where the tab's gonna be. That's exactly where it should be. So I hit enter, and now we have our two tabs. Excellent. Now what's cool about this is because we drove everything with that inner diameter, um, user parameter, we can just change this willy-nilly, and our stuff will change with it. Very cool, because the way we use the shell and the way we use the internal diameter, it's always gonna have that shell distance. And if we increase the shell, a lot of things are gonna change. You're gonna see, um, Let's put two for example. You can see that the, the tabs are a little bit pushed more. The uh, the shell is actually uh, bigger, and uh, our, anything that uses shell is obviously now two. So you can play with that number if you want. But I think that's an interesting way to try to drive this. We are missing a couple of elements uh, to make this uh, an actual case, but really this is uh, the core of what I think you can do. You can now apply this sort of method, the sweep method, to this uh, top edge, and you can create a cover. And you can create a cover by creating um, uh, another uh, another component and then kind of creating something that would catch this, um, kind of creating that chevron shape that, you, that you've seen in other cases. But that is kind of how to do it. Uh, I do have another uh, more in-depth tutorial on to show exactly how I created this, uh, this mount for the CPX. So definitely check that out if you'd like to see it. This is just a good uh, condensed way and a good way to demo uh, this type of method. I don't, want, I, I don't want to make it particularly for the Circuit Playground, so that's why I was uh, making it for this kind of fictional PCB that we don't have yet. Um, but that's really much it. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you guys have any questions or anything, let me know. I hope this is you found this useful. And if you have any tips, drop them in the comments. It'll help me out and other folks too. Don't forget, we have other videos in our, right over there, in our little eye icon. We have more tutorials there, so check them out. We have about 100 and plus of them, and we are working on more. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. But until then, remember to make a great day. Bye, folks.